Hi, welcome to another news update here on Buzzing Pattaya. And what a week we've had. Uh, so much has been going on, so much has been happening. I've been out busy doing my videos. One video I did, which you may or may not have seen, was on Friday. I released it on Saturday morning. Uh, that was Friday evening. I went down to Hooters uh, on Beach Road here in the city centre. Now, they are having their 2022 beauty pageant competition. Uh, it was great fun. It was really, really good. I have to say, uh, naturally, as you can expect, um, very, very nice scenery. And I'll tell you what, it was well run. I thought they organised it very well. The one thing that I didn't like was how they presented the winners uh, with the roses. That, that I'll talk about that in a second. But that was the kind of thing that I thought, oh, that could have been handled a little bit better, in my opinion. Uh, but if you're not sure where Hooters is, it's on Beach Road. Now, on the 30th of September this month, uh, they will be hosting the grand final. So if you are up in Bangkok or you want to nip up there, if you're here down in Pattaya, on the 30th of September at the Nana Complex uh, in, in, in uh, Soy 4 in Bangkok, they will be hosting the final. Now, the one thing I didn't like was basically the girls had to do three fashion parades. One was in the Hooters uniform, one was in a cocktail dress, and one was in a bikini. But at the end of each of those uh, processions, those, uh, those uh, walks, then the customers in the bar had the opportunity to buy roses and give them to the girls. Now, the girls with the most roses were placed third, second, and first. But the thing that I didn't like was there was a couple of girls there, and they were all very pretty girls. You know, they were all very, very pretty. But there was a couple of girls there that really didn't get much support. And, you know, how would that feel, you know, stood there like no roses and there's a girl next to you with like a hundred. Do you know, it was, it was quite awful. I, it reminded me, it reminds me of a little bit of, do you remember the old school discos? And you'd stand around the outside of the wall while all the girls were dancing and then they would bring out the slow, the slow dance. That was your opportunity to go in, go in for the kill, get yourself a girl of your, uh, of your choice and your dreams and hopefully, uh, you know, you might have a little smooch with her. But uh, I was always the one still left on the outside of the wall, <laughs> which is necessarily probably why, over the years, I don't actually go into nightclubs. I don't really enjoy them. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're very unlikely to see me in uh, Insomnia or Lucifer or anything, even though they're great, great places. But who remembers those days? Were you one of those guys that used to sit on the edge of the, uh, on the uh, edge of the wall while everyone else was slow dancing and smooching and have a little kiss and all the rest of it. And you're sat there going, well, bloody hell, that ain't no good, is it? No one's come up to me. So, <laughs> but they did it in Hooters. And I just felt what they could have done was they could have taken the roses and they could have let the girls stand there. And then the guys could have maybe electronically uh, awarded the roses. I don't know, maybe a different system, maybe put a, a, some buckets over the other side and put the roses in the buckets for each girl so that it wasn't blatantly obvious that you didn't have any roses. And then at the end, then they could announce the winner and it'd be a nice surprise. Whereas this way around, two or three girls literally had like five or six roses and there's girls there with, with armfuls. So, uh, but other than that, other than that, it was a really good event. Uh, it was well run. I bumped into Lucas from Ride for Kicks and uh, that was nice to see him. I bumped into quite a few other YouTubers. I'll tell you what was really, really pleasing was the amount of people that came up and said hello. So thank you so much, guys. It really does mean a lot to me. I never expect it. I feel very humble when people come up and say, hey, I watch your channel, it's great content. Because, you know, I'm not that kind. I don't give a, I'm looking at me, Billy Big Spuzz, all that bollocks. For me, it's just like, look, I just do what I do and hopefully people enjoy what I do. So it was lovely to see that. And incidentally, I just want to cover one quick thing while we're here. There seems to be a bit of an underlying... Uh, tension or rumours going around saying that the YouTubers here don't get on. I can honestly and quite categorically say I have no axe to grind with anybody. I keep myself to myself, not because of any other reason than, you know, if you're going to go and make a video, I'm going to go and make a video. So I did the video the other day of the football stadium and I was then told that Nick uh, from NDTV, I, Nick had done it and droned it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, and in all honesty, without being disrespectful to Nick, I don't care because I want to do what I want to do. And if what I do works, great. If it doesn't, well, then that's a lesson learned. So I'm not really into this like, oh, they did that, so I won't do it. Because nobody has the right to claim, uh, you know, this is my area or this is my place. You know, nobody has that right. At the end of the day, we all get on. Well, I get on with them or I have no extra grind with anybody. So at the end of the day, I just wanted to clear that up. 
All right, so enough of me waffling about that. Hooters, 30th of August, uh, August 30th of September. Get yourself into Bangkok. I won't be going. Uh, it just wasn't my theme. It wasn't my thing because all the YouTubers there and uh, like all people with cameras and guys, customers, obviously they want to get their footage. And it was just like, oh man, sorry, I can't get, a, I couldn't be done with that. So, uh, but anyway, 30th of September, have a look on their website. Get yourself out there, guys. I'm sure you'll enjoy the eye candy and you may buy yourself a few roses. All right, so what's been going on? Um, you may remember the Mountain Bee fire uh, that was a disaster here, claiming many lives. Well, it's kind of gone off the radar in the social world. And so therefore, when things happen like that here, generally speaking, they tend to get not uh, swept under the carpet, but it, it kind of like once, the, once all the, the big news has calmed down, it tends to drag its feet. Well, the families of the Mountain Bee nightclub fire victims gathered a petition to the Department of Special Investigation to look into the case. They were reportedly dissatisfied with the progress of the inst investigation. And it says here, the gathering of the Morning families accompanied by a famous lawyer, uh, Rona Rong Kaupech, took place Monday morning and in front of the DSO Operation Centre Region 2 in Satahip. Uh, so, you know, there was 23 people lost their lives, which is, you know, it's awful. And they did do a kind of knee-jerk reaction where they started going around some of the places and saying, oh, is your fire, your fire precautions all in place? That's all stopped now. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the families are desperately trying to find, and, and, and quite rightly, they want to seek justification and compensation and all the things that they should be due. Uh, but at the moment, as it stands right now, things seems to have slowed down, which is not good. Interesting. Now, I read this now. This was on uh, uh, t the Tiger, Tiger News. And uh, what they said here is it's Thailand are to apply alcohol tax to non alcoholic beer so they're going to tax you for an alcohol license to serve you a non-alcoholic beer now surely a non-alcoholic beer is no different to a can of coke or a can of sprite because it's non-alcoholic so it says here not only is thailand planning on increasing existing tax on all types of alcohol but it also plans on applying alcohol tax to non-alcoholic beer that's what they're saying. Yeah, so they went on to say that the department will increase tax on all types of alcohol in the fiscal year 2023 to help combat alcoholism among Thailand's youth. So what they're saying is that they're going to put the prices up to combat the, the, uh, the alcoholism in among the Thailand youth. But if they put the prices up, that affects everybody. That doesn't affect the specific niche that they're trying to target. So I'm not quite sure why we are going to be penalised by higher prices to uh, overcome this situation that they're currently in. So I don't know why, well, why they've done it or where they've done it from, but that's what they're looking to do. Now, incidentally, and this is a really good one, uh, they're also saying that they are going to tax e-cigarettes and that it would be increased according to the COSOD. Now, e-cigarettes are illegal in Thailand, so it's unclear how the tax will be applied or is already being applied to vapes unless Thailand is planning to legalise vaping anytime soon. So maybe, maybe the vaping situation will be permitted because right now, and if you're not aware of this, guys, do not get caught vaping here in Thailand. If you're caught vaping, they will confiscate the vape and you are definitely going to get a whack with a fine because it is, right now as we make this video, it is illegal. So uh, do your vaping out of sight, out of mind. And uh, you know, if, if you're someone that's, uh, I, I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but if you're someone that has to vape and you, you need to get your uh, your intake, maybe go into the toilet, go for a wee and do it in there. Don't, you know, don't sit in the public or walk down the streets doing it, because if you are seen by the police, they will, they will take it off you and you will be getting a fine. So please be aware of that. But who knows? Maybe, maybe they're looking at uh, legalizing it. Um, I think it's to do with import duty, I think, as to why they've not got it. I, I don't know. I'm not a smoker. I've never smoked in my life. So I don't know the actual ins and outs of why you can't vape here, what the, what the legal status is. Maybe it's the import tax they're not getting, and that's what they're looking for. So, yeah, who knows? But fingers crossed for you guys. If you are going to be vaping, then, uh, you know, it should be or possibly could be legalized very soon. But if it is you might be paying a bit of a tax on it. So there we are on that one. 
Now, this story, I'll tell you what I want to talk about this for is specifically because we often take the electrical wiring here for granted. And I do it myself. You know, you go in the house and you plug stuff in. Sometimes, I don't do it now hardly at all, but sometimes you might go back out and leave something on and leave electrical appliances plugged in. Now, if you're here on holiday in the hotel room, generally speaking, you've got the key card. When you take the card out, it cuts all the electrical, which is great. But if you're hiring, if you're here long term, maybe you're renting a, a villa or you're renting a long term studio, a condo, whatever. What I would say, just be very, very careful with the electric. Try and unplug non-essential things. So maybe if you need to leave your refrigerator on, that's fine. But, you know, your TV, your internet and all the rest of it, just maybe unplug it. I do that. Now, a Patea gift shop was damaged when light bulbs on a Buddhist shrine exploded. Uh, four fire trucks, four fire trucks uh, responded to the event, uh, to the incident, sorry, and it was a four-story shop house on Soy Tango, uh, Tangmo off Soy Bacal. And they took about 20 minutes to control the fire and bring it under control and, uh, and deal with it. But the damage they estimated was some 300,000 baht. And all I'm going to say, guys, is, you know, we have stringent electrical uh, safety around the world. I know that, particularly in, from my experience in the UK. Uh, you know, you all be tested and pat tested, etc. But out here, that doesn't tend to happen. So be very careful, guys. And if you do, you know, it's, it's so easy to go into somewhere like Tukcom on, on uh, Patea Dai, South Patea Road, and go and buy an extension lead, you know, a four-way extension lead for like 80 bar, whatever, 100 bar. Well, it's cheap as chips for a reason, and that is because possibly it's not made to the highest specification. And if you are plugging in things like laptops and stuff like that, and you may have a power surge, all these kind of things, just be careful, guys. That's all I'm saying. So when I did the Hooters event, what I did do afterwards, I, I thought, well, let's take the opportunity to go into Walking Street. Now, a lot of people have said to me, come on, Trev, get yourself out there an evening, son. Come and show us what's going on, etc." which I will do. I am going to do it. And I did take a walk through Walking Street. I couldn't video it, sadly, because the video footage from the Hooters had pretty much taken all my battery from my uh, DJI Pro. But I tell you what, it was busy. It was busy. It was it was kind of, it was probably about, I'd say about 50% of what it used to be like, you know, when it was rammed and the flag chases and all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of Indian tourists there. There's a lot of girls there. There was a lot of girls there. Uh, but it is getting busier. Now, on the back of it getting busy, what people have been saying now is Patea's going to change. There's a new future coming out. I mentioned it about a video about what's the future of Walking Street, where do you see it going? And there are a lot of things that are happening in the future. But this one really sort of put the, the cat amongst the pigeons because there is a Singapore real estate school opening in Patea. And what they're doing is they're saying it's one of the Southeast Asia's largest real estate Academies has opened in Patea in the first step in a kingdom-wide expansion. So what they're doing is now they're coming in and they're going to be teaching people. They're going to run this workshop. And basically, it's designed, it says, the school will offer relevant courses to professionals, managers, executives, and technicians covering leadership and human resource development, selling and negotiating, digital marketing, and more. Now, is that... Is that a step in the direction where they're going to say, listen, guys, we are going to be changing the demographic here. There are going to be a lot more real estate, a lot more uh, realtor going on, and maybe some businesses are coming here and all those kind of things. And this is designed to help people deal with those kind of scenarios that maybe they're not up to speed with right now. I don't know. But it does kind of sit in the format that, hey, you know, we are changing. And I have done a, 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 a poll in Discord, which I'll read out in a minute, and I covered off, what do you think the future of Patea is? And it was an interesting poll. So in Discord, if you haven't joined Discord, please have a look. There's a link in the description below. Get yourself on there. It's getting busier and busier, better and better. There's more things coming to this uh, channel, uh, to the platform. So it really is worth it. And it's completely free of charge. So jump in there, guys. But I posed the question. I said, is Patea finished or is it the start of a new chapter in this incredible city's history? And I want to read through some of the comments. There's a lot of comments, but uh, Patea Earl said, Patea is constantly evolving, evolving. Let's see how things look November to January, which, you know, yet yeah, that's not a bad uh, time span. Uh, Kawabunga Dude says, Patea is always full of surprises. Expect the unexpected. 
That's a valid point. You know, there are a lot of things go on here that we think, really, did that happen? But it does. Uh, Alf says, Thailand is shifting the focus towards newer Asian markets. It also has a resilient currency, so European currencies, and thus numbers of European visitors will trend downwards. What do you think about that? Now, that's a powerful statement. What do you think? Uh, Mark says, the China question. When China allows their citizens to travel post-COVID, casino, a better Macau. Do you think they're going to have a casino here? Do you think that's really going to happen? Do you really think they're going to do that? I don't know. It would make sense, but I don't know. How, they'd have to they'd have their police that with the gambling here. I don't know. That's, a, that's another one. Uh, to those who hate change, then it probably is. However, for the rest of us, we appreciate that all cities evolve and Patea is no different. There is still plenty here for everyone to enjoy, whether it will be nightlife, eating out, sport, exercise, or just beach and sunshine, says Phil. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it is going to change. And if you... I've had people that I've met and, and people have commented and said, oh, I was here in Patea like 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, how it's all changed. And it has changed dramatically, dramatically. And even in the short time I've been, I've only been living here 10 years and coming here 12 years, and I've seen huge changes. So there is definitely change is going to happen, but it's just what kind of changes. Uh, Elder Pass says, I don't think it's finished. I think it's time for a new version. I mean, if you ask the guys who went back in the day, then their version has already gone, which is exactly what I've just said there. It has changed. So, you know, is this version we're in right now a much and definitely a more improved version of the version that was, say, 10, 15 years ago? And what will be the next version? I mean, what, imagine, I wonder what Walking Street will look like in another 10 years. What do you think? Uh, Thai legal protection, Peter says there, Patea is far from being done and dusted. During COVID-19, foreigners left, tourists stopped coming, Entertainment grinded to a halt, but most significantly, foreign investment was withdrawn and basically stopped. Uh, now the country has reopened and Patea is beginning to thrive again, which I agree with. Uh, this is why my partner and I decided to focus on Patea as an area to grow our business and compare it to the stock market. If you get in early and invest uh, now, it will cost you less. Five years from now, things will be different for sure. The city will be thriving again. You'll be glad you got in early. And you know, that's such a true thing because I know so many people now, if you look around the city, so many people are buying into bars, are opening up bars, not for now, because right now it is a catastrophe in terms of trying to make profit. But when things do come back, I guess they are gonna make a lot of profit and things will return. So yeah, you know, a good valid point there from Thai Legal Protection. Now, you know, I could go on and on and on, but there's a, there's a lot of comments in there. And just, you know, if you haven't been on Discord, guys, have a look in there, you know, see what you think. And, uh, you know, have a comment. Tell me, what do you think? Where, are, where is the future of Patea? Now, finally, uh, as I've said before, there's a lot of events happening, obviously, with the hoots and stuff. There's quite a few festivals going on. There's more stuff being put into the calendar to come here so you can enjoy these events. But it's had a bit of a knock-on effect and a bit of a moan coming from the local residents. Whilst they're happy that the, uh, you know, the infrastructure here is being improved, because it's not being finished, I've got to say to you, and truthfully, it's causing carnage in some of the uh, areas, particularly along Second Road, uh, areas around Soy 15, all around these areas where you're trying to, I was down on Beach Road yesterday, it was just carnage, it really is. And that's as a result of the fact that these contractors have not finished, they're not being forced and pushed, and what they're, in t what they're actually doing is they're encouraging new developments and new things to be doing, instead of focusing on what's actually here right now and getting that finished. So second road has still got a long, long way to go. It, you know, sometimes it, it, uh, it bottlenecks into a single lane, into two lanes. And, you know, it really is causing a lot of problems. So fingers crossed, hopefully, with this new, uh, new uh, petition going into the local government and into the, into the city council here saying, look, can we please finish off what we've started before we start on something new, which makes perfect sense, but then you know what making sense here is all about. It just doesn't happen. All right, guys, so that's it for this week. Um, I will try and find, as things start to progress and start to get better, I will try and bring more interesting news to the table because I feel like sometimes I'm just kind of like re-rinsing stuff. Um, it's nothing personal, I'm not doing it deliberately, it's just there isn't a lot, great deal of things happening. Uh, but like I say, please get on Discord, guys. It really is a fantastic plan. Now, that is under huge, huge improvements coming the way. Uh, I've got lots of plans for it by the end of this year, so it really is well worth jumping into. So please, guys, have a look in there if you haven't already. And uh, if there's any topics, any conversations, any videos you'd like me to, to put out there, 
Drop me an email, guys, 247pataya at gmail.com. I'm more than happy to put it on my list of to-dos and uh, let's see what we can do. Like I say, I will go out in the evenings coming up soon. I just got to figure out a way around that one. Um, there's lots of changes. The new website is currently being worked hard on and I'm hoping once that's done, then we're going to have like a, a front, a front, uh, nice all singing, all dancing, user-friendly side and then there's going to be a members area, free members area, where you can dive in the back there and you can have a look around for the nightlife area. So that way we can kill two birds with one stone. We can make it nice and friendly at the front and then we can uh, have it all the nightlife stuff in the back. All right, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And uh, please, as always, remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I bring out a new video. Uh, please have a look on Discord. And if you would like to support the channel and the work that I do here, uh, there is a link in the description below. And membership starts from as little as 89 pence a month. All right, thank you so much indeed for watching, guys. And please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.